What's going on, guys? My name is Prerak Trithani. I'm an MD MBA student here at Yale University, and I am here to tell you today what I think all incoming med students need to know because I wish someone had told me this during my first year of medical school, hell, even my second or third year, and I'm actually now in my fifth chronological year, although my fourth year of med school in general. So hopefully this presentation helps you. I Let's get started with the first one, which is just the fact that shit's about to get real. I'm not going to sugarcoat this because I know the start of medical school is actually a very joyous occasion and you all should be proud to start medical school. But the fact of the matter is over the next four to five years, you will undergo um, a lot of challenges, a lot of great times, a lot of bad times, and a lot of things that you're going to find out about yourself that you may not have known. Because after all, believe it or not, medical school is hard. It's very eye-opening because, for example, you're going to be seeing patients who are vulnerable. You're going to potentially be seeing cadavers when you do anatomy. You're going to be seeing patients who die. And that's just a fact of the matter. And all of these are going to bring up emotions that very few other people have uh, because guess what? Not many people see other people die. Not many people see other people and they're most vulnerable. So just realize that it's okay to feel all of these emotions and this will happen to you. When I say med school is hard, it is very hard. Step one is seven hours. Step two is eight hours, right? Both of these board exams are very, very time consuming and also very, very challenging. And so with that being said, just remember that these are things to just keep things in context. Never forget that medicine at the end of the day is still a privilege. I think you get so used to the studying that you often forget when you see patients just how crazy it is that you are being like given the opportunity to go get to know someone at that intimate of a level. And just remember that because sometimes it's so easy to forget in the midst of all the craziness that will ensue inevitably. The last thing I want to bring up is that the next four years will be a wake-up call in a lot of different ways, right? Um, you might get married. Your friends might get married. Uh, people you care about might get affected in different ways. And just at the end of the day, remember that things can change and it won't necessarily be exactly the same as it was in undergrad. With that being said, I want to bring us to our next point, which is the fact that introspection is encouraged. With all of the emotions that you're going to be feeling over the next four years, as someone who has been on countless walks by himself just thinking about my feelings, thinking about why I feel the way I feel, I encourage every one of you to take the time to see what you like. Not everyone has to like the same thing. You don't have to like certain specialties. You don't have to like all the doctors you meet. You don't have to like all your classmates even. You have to figure out what you like and second of all, use that to guide what your priorities are. Are you someone who is going to make time for family and may not be the best student? Are you going to be the someone who's going to get the 270 plus on step one? Are you going to be the person who's just still in the college mindset trying to do the best in everything? That's totally fine. But just remember, not everyone is in the same place in medical school anymore and everyone has different priorities and it's important that you figure out what your priorities are. That comes in line with the third and fourth um, aspect, which is to find your niche and find your people. Finding your niche is kind of the same thing in terms of determining who your priorities are. Are you going to be the person who publishes 80 papers a week? Or are you going to be the person who doesn't care much about research and is focused much more on patient care and the free clinic at your institution? Similarly, find your people. Are you going to be the person who doesn't, who isn't here to make friends, which is again, totally fine. Or are you going to be the super overcompensating social first year, much like myself, who went into med school with like this mentality of undergrad where I was like, I want to meet everyone, get to know everyone. And lo and behold, I slowly realized like maybe I don't want to do that. Maybe I only want to get to know a few people who I care a lot about and that's kind of where I'm at now. So you have to figure out what your niche is and what people it is that you want to surround yourself with. The third point, which is probably the most important point, is that you are not your classmates. Everyone gets into medical school because they are very competitive in one way, shape, or form or another. And I think because of that, we often have gotten into this rat race mentality where we learn to compare ourselves to others and try to be the best because that's how we got into med school. We wanted to be uh, better, if not the best, compared to other people. But in med school, you're going to quickly realize this think way of thinking is very futile. And those objective measures, which you once sought to be, oh my God, look at that person. He's so cool. I want to be just like him. All of those objective measures are all out the window. They don't mean much anymore because all that means much is the things that you put value on. So you are, guess what? You are allowed to not be the best student. You are allowed to admit you're struggling. You're allowed to ask for help and you're allowed to not be okay. I've asked for help countless times. I've called my dean multiple occasions. I've had multiple 
breakdowns, believe it or not. I've called my parents multiple times crying. Um, it's going to happen. And part of that was because I held myself to a very unreasonable standard and kept comparing myself to others. And what I quickly realized is that I need to stay in my own lane. And this wasn't even quick. This was more my third and fourth year of med school. And now, and once I got more comfortable in that, and once I got more comfortable in my shoes, I started thriving because I was able to find my niche. I was able to find my people. The people I surrounded myself with were the people that didn't, didn't care about my grades. They were the people that knew endogenously that they wanted to be around me, that they respected X, Y, and Z about me. And I didn't need external validation. Um, and this is something that you're either going to learn by experience or you're either going to take my advice and try to implement it right away. But some, you will learn this sooner or later because if you don't stay in your lane, you, it's, it's a formula for disaster. Let's just put it that way. Because in medicine, there's always someone who's going to be better than you, cooler than you, 20 times on top of their shit than you. And that's just the way it is. And if you don't learn to stay in your lane, that will eat at you every second of every day. And it's not particularly uh, a great mentality. So with that, I want to end this presentation by telling you the things that you should never forget, but you probably will. And this slide is just here to remind you to not forget them. The first one is that it is a privilege. Even though you're going to be studying some days and wish that you didn't go to medical school, which I guarantee you almost every person thinks once at one point or another, even when you're awake at 3 a.m. and on an on-call day and just wishing that you could sleep, um, just remember that it is a privilege. The second thing you need to remember is you worked your ass off to get to where you are and that does not change the further you go. Whether that's getting into residency, getting into an MBA program, getting into an MD MBA program, whatever it is, you have worked your ass off every step of the way and you deserve credit for that. Okay, so don't ever diminish yourself because you feel like, oh, I didn't do well on this thing and therefore I'm a horrible student. No, that's not right because you've worked your ass off to be here. Also, never forget the bigger picture, which is the fact that regardless of what happens, assuming you try your best and pass your exams, you will still become an MD. And even your worst case scenario is still going to be fine. I know that's like something that people are like, oh, well, you don't know it's going to be fine. Actually, it all depends on what you define as fine, right? For me, um, I have realized that like I used to get so upset over like, oh my God, if this doesn't happen, then I'm never going to like get a get into residency. And then I was like, that's not okay. But then I was like, wait, even if I don't get into residency, I will still end up doing something that I want to do in medicine. And so that's how I now define fine because I'm like, you know what? I promise it's going to be okay. Part of this is also my mindfulness coming in and realizing like, it's okay. Like I'm okay. All right. And that is something that I think, again, over the next few years, I encourage all of you to develop. The last thing I encourage you to remember is never forget the patients and your family. The patients, because sometimes we get so caught up in learning and teaching and doing all the things that we often forget who the end consumer of healthcare is, and that is the patient, and we want to ultimately ensure the experience is better for them. Um, and also never forget your family. Uh, that doesn't, I mean, family is broadly defined, whether that's your mom, your dad, or your uncle, or your aunt, whoever it is that has helped you get to where you are, never forget those people. Because oftentimes when you're in those dark places and you don't remember why you're here in the first place, it's important to fall back on those individuals so they can remind you. So this is just my little you know, two cents for things that I wish I had known when I was starting. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please drop a like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching. Peace.